Hello everyone, my name is Naomi aka Nifty Nomi and welcome to my channel Be That Business. I'm a Canadian bookkeeper and a new business educator and I help entrepreneurs look under the hood to see how it all works. I'm fighting the good fight against double work and against giving CRA more money than you have to. Today what we're going to be talking about is how to put in a journal entry adjustment adjusting GST HST such that it shows up on your GST HST return. Now, I don't usually like using journal entries, like I, I don't mind them, but I like to use the interface when possible. There's a plethora of reasons and I can talk about that another time. But there are certain times that you do need to use a journal entry to adjust your GST HST. And there's a specific thing you need to know about how to put that in to make sure that it's captured on your GST HST filing tool in QuickBooks. Now I am going to talk a bit about um, business use of home and um, different parts about what you can claim. So if you're just looking to see how to put in a GST HST adjustment, um, I've got some bookmarks down in the comments for you to jump to the part that you're interested in. There are, you know, three types of ways to claim HST on your expenses. Uh, the first way is if it's like the actual materials and office expenses and everything like the, you know, like the paper or the, the brick, the tools, whatever you're buying for your business, you put it in as a bill and there's expense and it captures the HST easy. There's a middle one that we're not going to talk about today, but the middle one is like your cell phone or say your internet. These things have, uh, like if it's the internet for your home, not for like a store or anything. Um, those ones have some personal portion in it, right? So when you have a personal portion part of the HST, say you only say you're using your internet 70% for business, or your cell phone 80% for business, or 60 or you know 75% for business. If if it's a substantial amount for business that you're using your cell phone or the, your internet, you're gonna want that expense and associated associated HST into your bookkeeping file. You're gonna want to enter the expense in. So you you need to let your accountant know or tax preparer know how you're putting it in. But let's say if you've got, you know, a, a bill for $100 plus $13 HST for your cell phone bill, and you're only going to claim 70% business, then put in 70% cell phone, put in 70% of the HST, and then either don't put the rest in because you're, you're paying it personally, or put the rest into shareholder owner draw, and then that way it'll be able to pay the bill. Um, but again, you're just putting in like the 70% of the cell phone and the 70% of the HST and you're using that bill expense interface and that way it gets on your HST filing tool as well pretty easily. So those are for expenses like internet or like, tel like cell phone that do have a bit of personal portion in there. You can still use that expense interface the way that I spoke about. Probably do another video a bit more specifically about that. And then today what we're talking about is business use of home expenses. Now this is a very unique type of expense and HST credit because first of all, it's only for um, sole proprietors. If you are incorporated, you do claim home office expenses, but a different way. You're going to want to speak to your accountant about how they want you to claim that. So that's an important thing to, to note. But if you're self-employed or, or a sole proprietor, a non-incorporated business, right? When you file your taxes, you can claim a portion of your home office if you don't have a location outside of the home where you do your office work. Okay. And the percentage that you can claim is based on the square footage. How big is your office and how much do you actually use it for work? Half the time, is it, is it a dining room the other half of the time? So using the square footage percentage of based on your house, and then based on how much you use that space for work. So you can see it's not a very big percentage. Like it's really like, I don't know, anywhere between seven to, I don't know, 15, 18%. Like just depends on the house, the space, how much you use it. And again, if you, if you have a location outside of the home where you do some of your paperwork, it might be harder to claim or to validate. So again, talk to your accountant about that. But for me, I don't have a location anywhere but here. I work from home and this is my office. And uh, so I'm going to claim business use of home. And again, because it's a residential home, if I was doing an Airbnb, I couldn't do like the 40% of my utilities. If it's like the Airbnb HST, like for the utilities of a residential home can't claim. This is very specific. 
for your business use of home expenses. Now, again, because it's just such a small percentage, some people choose to put it on their profit and loss every month, like put an expense entry in or a journal entry in. But I mean, do you really want to see your profit and loss with like expenses that you'd be paying anyway? You want to see if your business is profitable outside of your regular home expenses, I would think. It's just a preference. Um, so generally, I say, let's just put it in on the last day of the year. Let's just add up all the totals and put it in on the last day of the year. Um, and in fact, maybe we're just putting in the GST portion right now. So let's take a look at what that looks like uh, on QuickBooks. So here's just a quick synopsis on some of the on what the business use of home expenses are that you can claim if you have a home office and you don't have a location outside of your home that you do your business paperwork. And what we can see here is we can claim heat, electricity, insurance, maintenance, mortgage interest, property taxes, and other. Um, so I put my water bill in there. Uh, and you can see that, let's say we're doing 15% um, of the, uh, you know, maybe I did some math and figured out that this is the percentage that I'm going to be claiming for business use of home. And you can see that this number divided by 12, you know, we could put an entry, well, we could put each bill in each month, but only put a portion of it. You could do that. That's an option. I don't. Uh, or we could just sort of keep track of the business use of home expenses on another spreadsheet outside of our QuickBooks and at the end of the year, put in an adjustment. By the way, if you are incorporated, you can do this too and just send the spreadsheet to your uh, accountant and they'll make that tax adjustment for you. So what I can see is I've noted what the pre-tax amount is each month as well as the tax amount. That's because Ontario Power specifically has this little rebate thing in Ontario. I think I've seen it in Nova Scotia as well, depends on your province, where the tax is not exactly 13%. So you can see, I don't want to just take my pre-tax amount and times it by 13%, or I don't want to just back out 13%. I want all of that HST goodness. So that's why I've recorded the pre-tax and the tax amount. And you can put a total column if you feel like it. Now we're going to be claiming 15% of this HST. So that's going to be 60, 89 right there. And we're going to be claiming this much right here. Oh, 15, 15% there. Okay, so how are we going to put this into QuickBooks? First of all, let's go ahead and you can notice that the HST here, 449.98. So I'm going to just put that here, 4499.98. Is that the number? I forget things so quickly. Four, four, yep, 60.89 and 20.76. There we go. We're going to take this number minus this number minus this number. We're looking for it to say 4418.33. That is the goal. So coming over here, let's go ahead and say new journal entry. And I'm going to date this June 30th only because that is the, like I'm just showing you what QuickBooks does here. And that's sort of the next period that it needs to be filed. Again, I generally say, let's just put this entry in at the end of the year on December 31st. You could do it monthly if you wanted. You could do an expense entry monthly, then you wouldn't need this adjustment screen. We're just talking about adjustments here. So we're going to do a journal entry, June 30th, and we're going to say, let's just show you one example. If we were to, if we wanted to put in the, the, the 15% um, for the business use of home utilities on our December 31st, that would kind of skew our, our month over month analysis, but from a year perspective, it would be fine. Let's see. If we were to say put in times 0 0.15, 31937, a debit increases expenses. Then we could simply say HST on purchases right here. HST on purchases is important to say whether it's on purchases or sales. So it's say HST on purchases. And then let's say we've paid this um, owner's contribution draw. So let's just say you paid it outside of the business bank account, which you should have, because that makes your banking, your business um, bookkeeping easier. Um, you can see that what it's doing is it's putting the HST down here. So now this is getting it in. This is one way of doing it, but it's not fabulous, is it? Because look, it's only putting in 41.52. Nah, I want, I want 60.89. So I'm going to have to like force it. Uh, and so this would work if it worked out nicely enough, but 
it, it doesn't. So the way that we force it is we don't say there's HST on this right here, but we say GST, HST payable, that's the one that we want to affect, GST, HST payable, not suspense. And we want to also put it in this column here, and that was 6089. And again, we have to say where it goes. This is the key. You have to say that it's line 106. Let's drop it down. We've got all these options. You want to say HST ITC, that's input tax credit, line 106. And again, this is just HST on expenses. If you were doing some sort of adjustment towards sales for whatever reason, you would want to use the HST line 103. That's HST collected. But this is not collected on sales. This is paid on purchases, ITC, input tax credit. We get it back. And then we would say, owners uh, draw contributions. And then the description, you could put in um, year and adjustment for business use of home expenses. 15% as per detail attached, right? You could do that. And again, you download, you'd save the spreadsheet and you can attach it right there so that looking back in time, you can see what's going on. So this is one way to do it. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit more about how it works and why it works in a second. But just so that you know, uh, you don't necessarily, like you could put this 319 in at the end of the year and it just makes your December look a little lower. I mean, that's doable. You might not wanna see your business use of home on your profit and loss because it's really just a tax adjustment to like reduce your taxable profit. So, you know, some people like to see it because they'd be like, if I didn't use my office, I'd have rent expense, you know? So, I mean, it's, it's, it's personal preference really, as long as it's communicated to the tax preparer what you did or as long as you know what you're doing for your taxes. Let's just say we just wanted to adjust for the, um, the tax adjustment. What's just a tax adjustment, Naomi? That's the question. Okay, so a tax adjustment. Let's just say we're just putting in the taxes because I don't want to see the business use of home expense on my profit and loss all in December. I don't want to see it, let's say. So here we go. We're just adjusting the tax here now, just as this is a tutorial on how to put in tax adjustments into QuickBooks. And let's put in the GST HST payable on the 2076 on the Enbridge. Okay. I'm not going to put that in to show you how it screws it up. So put it in, but I'm just going to show you what it does when you don't. We don't have to have a new line. I can just increase this one to uh, 8165. There it is. So uh, just aside here on the sheet, there's no HST on insurance. There's no HST on mortgage interest. Property taxes is no HST. Again, that's the interest portion of your mortgage payment, not your entire mortgage payment if you were going to uh, claim these different things. Uh, and again, like that's what I was saying is like, you don't know these till the end of the year anyway. That mortgage interest is gonna be on your, the statement that you get from the mortgage company at the end of the year. So how, you know, so if you put it in monthly, you're gonna have to adjust anyway. I just call this a tax adjust, like a income tax adjustment. I don't necessarily myself care to put it on my books. But like I said, you can, you can put it on on December so that your total year has everything in it. So you can absolutely do that the way that I was showing you on the journal entry. So electricity is the only other thing here that has HST. So let's go ahead and I've put that in. I'm gonna leave that blank just to show you how it doesn't work. So here we go, before we hit save, what we can see is we've got 4499.98 showing right now on our HST, GST filing module in QuickBooks. You also wanna to check to make sure that that's what your balance sheet says. So here's my balance sheet as of June 30th, and we can see that the HST payable is 4499.98, um, and the suspense is zero. So what suspense is, is when you file your HST, it takes that 4499.98 and it does a journal entry moving it. It does it and it tags stuff, so I use the module all the time, and it moves it to the suspense account. And what suspense is, is HST filed and payable, or what I owe CRA. Like I filed it, now CRA wants it. That's what suspense is. And then when you pay, it pulled, like the when you add the payment 
through this uh, modular right here, it will take it out of the suspense account. That's why suspense account is usually zero, um, unless it's the between the times between when you file and pay. So again, we were looking at that profit and loss, uh, sorry, the balance sheet as of June 30th, because that is June 30th, the period that I'm looking at here. And again, you would be doing December 31st. I'm just using June 30th because it's where my QuickBooks happens to be at right now. What happens when I hit save? Save. Now it didn't yell at me and say that it wants me to say where to put the GST HST on the tax filing screen. I think it should, or at least an alert. It's my personal opinion, QuickBooks, are you listening? Because now you can see if I go over here and I hit refresh, is it gonna give me this number that we want 4418.33? No. Remember, I screwed up on purpose. It doesn't. But what does our balance sheet say? I'm going to, I don't think I need to refresh on this one. I think it refreshes itself. Look at that. 4418.33. That's what we want the general ledger to say. But we also want our tax filing tool to say that. But it doesn't because we didn't tell it to put it on the GST HST filing tool. That's why that box is so darn important. Let's zoom in and show you what I mean. Here it is. We're going to go to prepare return. And I'm going to just click on line 106, these ITCs that it's calculating right here. And we can see all the way down on June 30th. It's that journal entry 20. That's the one that we just saved and it only shows one thing for journal entry 20. The only thing it shows us is the 6089, because that's the only thing we said, put it on here. If we don't say where to put it on the GSTHST filing tool, well now GSTHST filing tool doesn't know about it. So we've got to go back the long way. It thinks that we owe 443909 and our balance sheet is different, 441833. And so, this, if your balance sheet is different than your GST HST filing tool as of the June 30th or whatever date you're viewing here, you know there's something going on that needs to get fixed or looked into. But of course, for us, this is a fairly easy fix. We know what it is HST ITC right here. Input tax credit, hit save. And now when I hit refresh, now it sees it. It's coming. There it is, 4418.33, which we haven't changed our balance sheet at all. 4418.33, all is right in the world. Now we can go ahead and hit prepare return. And if we wanna make sure that everything's in there, we can always just take a quick peek into the ITCs, scroll on down, and we'll see that now it's seeing it, now it's capturing, and we can go ahead and file our adjustment, our HST, knowing that we have those business use of home HST adjustments in there. If you found this video useful, don't forget to subscribe to my channel. I'm on Instagram at Be That Business. You can tweet at me, I'm at Nifty Nomi on Twitter, and I'm also at Nifty Nomi on Twitch and TikTok. And you can find resources and courses about running a Canadian business on my website, naomiwilkins.ca. And you can also subscribe to my newsletter, Created to be interesting and useful, the Be That Business newsletter is a twice monthly email, one on the 14th of every month with three business hacks and one on the 29th of every month to share three amazing resources to help your business thrive. It also lists all of the upcoming due dates for the coming month for you to put onto your calendar. And these newsletters are dated on the 14th and the 29th on purpose to remind you of what might be due the next day. The video today was recorded in beautiful Gananoque, Ontario. Thanks for watching and get out there and be that business of thrives.